Um, yeah, hi, my name is Prem. Um, this is a joint work with Adobe and Northwestern University. Um, and the paper is called Voice Assist, Guiding Users to High Quality Voice Recordings. So if you're in this room, you've probably seen something like this uh, in the recent past, possibly while editing the videos for this conference, for example. Um, and basically what we're trying to do is trying to like, you know, make a narration on top of some video or just narration by itself for like a radio program or something like that, right? And you're faced with an interface that looks like this. There's record buttons, play buttons. There's like a multi-track kind of view. Another version of this one would be you know, a popular program called Audacity where, you know, you have a similar kind of view where you're just recording. And the hope is that when you sit down to record something, um, it sounds like this. So in 1853, during the California gold rush, Halif Wittier at West published the Ten Commandments for Gold Miners who'd come out to prospect. Right. The hope is that you sound perfect like Ira Glass. You have the perfect kind of radio voice. Everything is very present, and it sounds really, really great. What actually ends up happening is something more like this. Unfortunately, our recordings usually sound like this. With too much background noise and reverb, we end up recording in suboptimal places, such as this room, for example. You can probably hear a lot of reverb of my voice right now. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, we end up using our microphones in suboptimal ways. Maybe they're pointed in the wrong direction. Uh, maybe we're recording in a corner. Maybe we haven't treated the room properly to reduce the number of reverb, uh, the number of reverberation, and stuff like that. So we set out to try to make an interface that kind of told users when these issues were happening and provided them with visual feedback that indicated that and let them react in real time to that visual feedback to produce a better recording. So this is the interface right here. This is um, what we called Voice Assist. On the left, there's a, um, a room acoustics box. And on the right, there's a background noise box. And I'll go into each of these, um, what goes into each of these boxes. The idea is that um, uh, the more red that a box is, the, you know, the, worse it, the worse that the machine thinks your recording is. The greener that a box is, the better that you're doing for that recording. So in each of these boxes are two measures. On the left, for room acoustics, we use this thing called the speech transmission index. So the speech transmission index is something that ranges between um, zero and one. So 0.95 and above is NPR level audio quality. That's Ira Glass levels, right? Around 0.85 is what you'd experience in a normal kind of room, like a bedroom or an office where you might be recording. Around 0.5 would be a parking garage. I would say this room with this microphone is around 0.6. All right. Um, uh, so in prior work, we developed a way to uh, measure this using a deep neural network. It takes in the audio samples, and it outputs a score between 0 and 1. And um, this work is about integrating that into a user interface. So in 1853. Oh, sorry. So I'm going to play a bunch of recordings right now that are at different levels of um, the speech transition index. It's supposed to be like at, the first one's going to be at one, and then, and then it's going to keep on going down. Because of the reverb in the room, the first one's actually going to be at like, going to sound to you as if it's at 0.8, not at one. So here's the first one. So in 1853, during the California gold rush, Halif Wittier at West published the 10 commandments for gold miners who'd come out to prospect. So um, the next level down. So in 1853, during the California gold rush, Halif Wittier at West published the Ten Commandments for Gold Miners who'd come out to prospect. So in 1853, during the California gold rush, Halif Wittier at West published the Ten Commandments for Gold Miners who'd come out to prospect. So in 1853, during the California gold rush, Halif Wittier at West published the Ten Commandments for Gold Miners who'd come out to prospect. All right, so his voice is getting more and more distant. There are a lot more echoes in the room and things like that. Um, and part of what can affect that is basically distance from the microphone. So if I'm talking here and I end up coming back here, you might you hear a different kind of sound coming out of it. Um, yeah. So the other box is just signal-to-noise ratio. So this is kind of used as a more traditional signal processing approach. So the idea is that if I'm speaking, um, there's some background noise happening, right? So maybe a fan on in the background or air conditioning or something along those lines. When I have something like that going on in the background, there, um, you know, if it's too loud, it kind of makes the audio more unintelligible. 
So signal-to-noise ratio basically just compares how loud the speech is to how loud the background noise is. So like an NPR-level audio, like we'll have around 40 dB of like boost from the um, recorded speech to the background noise. So I'm going to play again a bunch of examples. I'll play the perfect one first, and then with increasing levels of, um, or yeah, decreasing signal-to-noise ratio. So in 1853, during the California Gold Rush, a leafleteer at West published the Ten Commandments for Gold Miners who'd come out to prospect. So this one's, the next one's going to be just a little bit worse. So in 1853, during the California Gold Rush, a leafleteer at West published the Ten Commandments for Gold Miners who'd come out to prospect. You might not notice that one over the, you know, the noise in this room right now. But if you had headphones on, you would, um, it would, you know, not be great. Uh, here's one that's much worse now. So in 1853, during the California Gold Rush, a leafleteer at West published the Ten Commandments for Gold Miners who'd come out to prospect. Cool. So, um, again, those two boxes are kind of in this interface, right? So on the left, the speech transmission index kind of being computed by a deep neural network on the fly. And on the right, a signal-to-noise ratio that's also being computed on the fly through more traditional signal processing. So um, the color of the box indicates the quality. So in this instance, on the left, I have poor audio quality, um, or poor room acoustics, right? And on the right, I have, um, you know, the signal-to-noise ratio is pretty good. So I'm going to play uh, just a very short, like, video of me kind of talking, and you'll hear, you'll see the boxes kind of react to um, what's happening, uh, to, the, to the audio quality in real time. If a user moves away from a microphone and there's too much background noise, the quality indicators become red indicating that the user should make adjustments to improve audio quality. Something strange happened with the volume there. But at the beginning, I was kind of talking off mic a little further away. Um, there was a lot more reverb and kind of background noise in it. And then I moved closer to the mic, which kind of increases the signal-to-noise ratio. And because I'm closer to the microphone, there's um, less reverb coming in from like off mic sources like walls and things like that. So um, the simplicity of the interface, which is just boxes, kind of came from some design iteration that we did. So here, this is an early prototype of um, an early design for voice assist. So in this kind of thing, on the left, we had, um, you know, recording quality that kind of f uh, flowed in, like right to left, you know, and it kind of, the higher, the, the more filled the box was, the better it was. And then there was also this check box that kind of said, like, check or X or something like that. And then some sounds great, you know, tries to give some advice on what to do. Um, what we found in the studies is that this design had way too much cognitive load for the task that we wanted to do. So when people were trying to record their, um, record their excerpts and things like that, they wanted to focus on the task at hand. And they wanted an interface that they could kind of keep track of in their peripheral vision, but not have, that doesn't call too much attention to itself um, because they found it distracting. So um, with that kind of colored box interface, we wanted to um, evaluate it. So our experiment sought to answer three questions. So one is, um, do objective quality measures, like signal-to-noise ratio and speech transition index, do these things improve significantly when a user uses voice assist? Um, do the users themselves believe that they made a better recording with voice assist versus without it? And do third-party listeners, when they listen to recordings that are made with voice assist, do they prefer those to, the, um, to ones made without voice assist? So we had two interfaces that we were testing. Uh, first one was just a baseline interface that you might see in you know, Audacity, just kind of a mock um, a version of the Audacity interface, where you just get a record button and you get an amplitude kind of thing. So the, again, it's a time thing, so it flows in from right to left. And it just kind of tells you how loud you are at any kind of at any instance. Um, so this is the baseline interface. This is the one we're comparing against. The other interface, of course, is Voice Assist, which, in addition to the baseline interface, also gives these colored boxes um, that tell uh, that tell the user about the audio quality. So each participant um, in our user study makes two recordings. So the first recording they make is with the baseline interface for every participant. So they're just given the baseline interface. They're given a standard text that, they, that everyone records, um, and they just have to speak that text. Um, then they make a second recording, and if they're in a control condition, they just use the baseline interface again. 
Um, if they're in a test condition, they use voice assist. And the reason for that is because, you know, you record something multiple times, you might just naturally get better at it. So we wanted to see, you know, you record something twice, but the second time is with a different interface uh, to sort of disambiguate those two, uh, the, um, those two cases from each other. So the initial setup for recording um, is you're, they're in an environment where high recording quality is possible. Right, so they, they can get to a high quality voice recording. Um, we, uh, in the room, they use, there's a popular microphone for podcasting called the Blue Yeti. If you search podcast microphone on Amazon, it'll almost certainly be the top result. Um, it's what everyone buys when they're starting out for podcasting and things like that. Um, however, in the room, the microphone's pointed in the wrong direction. So if you speak into it, if you speak without adjusting your setup, you'll get a bad recording. Um, it's placed far away, it's kind of off axis, and then the gain and the position of the microphone um, has to be adjusted. Uh, so they have to move it around and they have to play with the gain a little bit um, to get optimal audio quality. So our user study, we recruited 23 participants, uh, 12 men, 11 women. Um, six men, six women were in the test condition and six men, five women were in the control condition. Um, it's important that it was, uh, you know, gender balanced uh, because these, the underlying so signal processing and machine learning tools can respond differently to different frequencies. So we wanted to make sure that um, it worked for everyone. So these are the instructions. Uh, this is kind of the workflow that they went through. So first they were given some time to familiarize themselves with the text that they needed to record. Then they recorded the text with the baseline interface. Um, then uh, they listened to that entire recording and they rated its quality, right? So they got to listen to the recording they just made and, you know, rate how good it was. Um, and then they experimented with the second interface, right? So uh, if it was the control condition, they were given instructions like, hey, you can adjust your environment, you can move your microphone around and things like that to try to find a better recording for the second take. Um, and if it was voice assist, they could, you know, experiment with it and see, uh, okay, let's try to make these boxes green or red or, you know, whatever they wanted to do. Um, and so they were, uh, they, they're given kind of an unlimited amount of training time. So they're just allowed to train for as long as they want, play around with the environment, try to get to a good recording. Then they record the same text again, and then they listen to the second recording and they rate that recording's quality. So I will play now a couple examples from the user study. Um, so this is the control condition that I'm going to go through first. So the first recording the user makes sounds like this. The appearance of the island when we came on deck next morning was altogether changed. Um, sorry, can we turn it up a little bit? I'll play it one more time. These are all a little bit quieter, so. The appearance of the island when I came on deck next morning was altogether changed. All right, so you can hear there's some room tone. There's a little bit of background noise on that recording. Um, uh, here's the second recording. So again, they were given time to experiment with it and they were able to you know, adjust. We gave them instructions on maybe how to adjust and things like that. Um, and this is the second recording, uh, given you know, a lot of help to maybe make a better recording. The appearance of the island when I came on deck next morning was altogether changed. There's still a ton of room tone in that recording. There's still a lot of background noise in the recording. Um, and it's almost, except for the volume difference that just happened, it's almost indistinguishable from the other recording. So nothing has really, um, nothing really improved in the control condition for this pair. So in contrast, here is a um, recording that happened uh, where in a test condition. So here's the before. The appearance of the island when I came on deck next morning was altogether changed. Cool. So that's the before. Um, here's what happened. I'm going to play like a short time lapse of this is what happened during the, um, during the training period. So you can see uh, this is the room. It's kind of like a, um, it's like a recording booth. There's the microphone right there, the silver thing, and she's kind of positioned away from it. So during training, she kind of fiddles around and she moves the microphone around to get a better um, recording. Um, and the knobs on the back on the microphone there are gain and a pickup pattern. Okay, so here's what the training looked like. So she's trying to make the boxes green. She's kind of experimenting with the gain right now. She finally figures out, yeah, the microphone's pointed in the wrong direction, and then finds a better kind of position. So here's what the second recording sounds like. 
The appearance of the island when I came back on deck the next morning was altogether changed. So there's um, a lot less room tone in that recording, and there's not a lot of background noise in the recording. So in the, um, we studied the impact first on audio quality measures. So we looked at the speech transition index in the, each pair of recordings. So we're comparing a recording that was made in the control condition in the first, like the first recording, to the second recording. So every comparison is done within user. There's no across user comparisons here. Um, so uh, within users, we compare first to second. We measure the audio quality measure along these two lines, and we see if we detect a change. So in the control case, we don't detect any change. The um, speech transition index and the signal to noise ratio stays um, basically the same from within the pair. However, in the test case, um, which uses voice assist, we saw there was a significant change. So the speech transition index in increased by about 0 0.03, and the signal to noise ratio increased by 2.3 dB. And one thing to note about this 0 0.03 number is that we're dealing with kind of a very um, a smaller range of uh, you know where acceptable good audio quality is. The difference between like 0 0.92 and 0 0.95 is essentially um, the difference between like. Uh, maybe a, a good bedroom recording versus an NPR recording level studio. And uh, um, in a separate study that somebody did a long time ago, like a 0.03 is actually the just noticeable difference for speech transition index. So in the self-reported results, we had noticed that users did not um, report that uh, the second recording was significantly better than the first recording. Right. Um, there might be a few reasons for this. You know, they might not be listening critically to their own recording. Um, uh, they might not have, you know, gone back and compared effectively between the two recordings, or they might not have a good idea of what a good recording sounds like. Um, however, when we presented those pairs to others, uh, to third-party listeners, we used um, uh, a crowdsourced audio quality evaluation called Cake. It's an open-source uh, software for comparing. Um, comparing pairs of recordings and doing kind of subjective listening tests on, on like Amazon Mechanical Turk. So we recruited a bunch of Mechanical Turkers and we asked them, hey, here's a pair of recordings, first recording, second recording, um, which one do you prefer? All right. So in the control condition, we noticed that there was basically no preference. There was 61 preferred the first recording, 62 preferred the second recording. However, in the, te in the test condition, which is the one that uses voice assist, we noticed that there was a big difference. One, the first recording, um, people only preferred 30 versus 96 on the second recording. So um, in conclusion, uh, we found that uh, voice assist is an effective interface for improving audio quality recordings. Um, the objective analyses, the speech transition index, and signal to noise ratio improved between the two recordings when you use voice assist. Third party listeners preferred voice assist recordings, uh, but the users themselves didn't really notice any difference. Yeah. And uh, that's my talk. Thank you. We have time for a few questions. A uh, fantastic presentation. Uh, my name is Chelsea Myers. I'm from Drexel University. So my question is, um, how much did your participants learn for, uh, to edit their recording through voice assist instructions versus your instructions that you provided? I'm really interested to, see, to hear a little bit more about that uh, recording, the video recording that we have. Like, what was that process looking like there? And they're like, oh, the gain and this and that. Right, so the, um, we kept the kind of instructions a little bit vague. So these are the instructions, that, these are the only instructions they really got. So it was to adjust, move closer, or adjust, reorient the microphone. It doesn't tell them what direction to reorient it, um, partly because there's no way to like say that outright in any use case, like you do this or that, right? Like, because you know, we don't know how it's gonna be if we deploy this, which way their microphone's gonna be pointing. So giving kind of specific advice can be more difficult. It's definitely a topic of like future work that we're um, that we're doing stuff, um, uh, and they got the same instructions in the baseline condition. And what we notice, if you look at the videos, is that people just didn't experiment in the control condition at all. Like, uh, um, 
these are people that we brought in to, so, I, so they, they were definitely participating in the task, but they really just didn't know what to do. They just kind of like fiddled around the environment, but they didn't know what direction to go in or how to alter things to make things sound better and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So was the woman in the video kind of looking at these colors and like yeah. then, okay. All right. Yeah, she's looking down at a laptop while she's, um, at a, while she's playing around with the environment and stuff like that. Awesome, thank you. Unfortunately, we need to switch to the next speaker. Um, the speakers will be here after the talk, so you can come down to the front of the room and speak to them afterwards. Cool. Thank you.